This question is number 41 from section 1.6. It reads as x minus the square root of 7x minus 12, and that's all underneath the radical, is equal to 0. To approach this problem, one of the easiest things to do is well, we know that we have a, a square root right here, so I'm going to highlight that in pink for you. And the issue is we have a lot of information, or the radicand essentially, that we need to crack into. So we need to figure out how to remove the square root. So if you recall, in order to remove a square root, we want to use, in this case, a square. We want to square both sides of the equation in order to break it because the square root and the square are inverses of each other. In order to successfully do that and to kind of save yourself a headache or in order to be a little bit more efficient with your calculations, I'm going to add this entire radical to both sides of the equation. So these will cancel out and my new line will read x is equal to the square root of 7x minus 12. So take a minute and kind of ponder why that why I would want to do that. Why does that seem to be more efficient than to uh, than instead of diving right in and squaring both sides? The explanation that I'll offer you here is if you were to go back to the beginning of this problem and you were to square both sides, Notice here that you have one term in here and then a second term right here. You would have to FOIL that. It's not necessarily impossible, but it could prove to be somewhat cumbersome to handle. So that's why instead of dealing with the FOILing, I'm going to keep one term on one, the left-hand side and then keep the other one on the right-hand side. So now that we have this, we know that we want to get rid of that square root. So what we want to do is we want to square both sides again to maintain that balance in the equation. And it's all because of this equal sign here. Okay, what one side gets, the other side should get as well in order to maintain that equality. Because if I don't, it's lopsided, it's not fair, it's not equal. So therefore, you're essentially no longer working the exact same problem. So if we do this, we get x squared is equal to, and these take each other out, and the radicand just simply falls down. So it's free now. At this point, what I want you to notice is that you have an x squared term, you have a 7x term, and a 12 term. Well, gee, if I were to maybe subtract 7x from both sides and add 12 to both sides, this provides me with a quadratic. At this point, the problem should look familiar. So you've essentially removed all of these layers to arrive back at something that you've probably seen countless times, um, or what probably feels like countless, countless times. Let's be honest here, right? So at this point, whether you need to use the box method or whether you feel comfortable using the AC method or I think there's a cross method or if you just prefer to do trial and error because again, you've done this so many times that it's just kind of natural for you now. We'll go ahead and see if we can factor this out. So we have x squared and we know that that can break into x and x. And then we have 12. And what you wanna ask yourself here is how can I, what two, what two numbers will multiply to give me a positive 12, but will add together to give you a negative seven? So in this case, I know that four and three are a good choice. Four times three gives me 12, but the other thing that I need to be aware of is that I have a minus seven. So I'm going to try a negative four and a negative three because Let's see, let me illustrate this. A negative three times a negative four gives me that positive 12 that I'm looking for. And negative four times x gives me negative four x and negative three times x gives me negative three x. If I were to add these two values together, 
I get negative 7x, which, is, which matches the middle term of my uh, quadratic here. So that being said then, I put x minus 4, x minus 3, and I'm pretty much home free at this point. So I can say that either x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0, and then simply solve them. This is the benefit of factoring. It allows me to break a quadratic that looks somewhat complex into these simple tiny um, binomials with degrees of 1. So all I have to do now is add 4 to both sides for this case, add 3 to both sides for this other case, and I reveal that x is either equal to 4 or x is equal to 3.